Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to be looking at decidable language closure properties. So I get this question asked all the time, what are the closure properties for a particular class of languages? So we're going to be talking about the decidable languages today. So what is a decidable language? It's a language that is decided by a, a Turing machine. And what, was, what does decided mean? Decided means the TM runs, if I can spell runs, in a finite amount of time, regardless of what the input is. So if I give you any type of input whatsoever, and the Turing machine is a decider, it must say accept or reject in a finite amount of time. It can never run forever. Um, there could be um, a Turing machine for this language that runs forever on the strings that are not in the language that is called a recognizer but here we're talking about turing machines that are deciding the language they always run in a finite amount of time even for the strings not in the language so let's handle the main five operations so the first one is complement so if we have a turing machine that runs for a finite amount of time well, that means that it will hit the accept state or the reject state in a finite amount of time. So couldn't we just switch the role of the accept and reject state? And it turns out we can. So here, let's just swap the Q accept state and the Q reject state in the Turing machine. And we can do this because there's only one accept state and only one reject state in every Turing machine, or at least in this model of Turing machines. And we are allowed to do this because, well, if it hits the accept state before in a finite amount of time, then in the modified machine, it hits reject in a finite amount of time and vice versa. So this doesn't work with recognizers because if it hits the accept state in a finite amount of time, it hits the reject state in a finite amount of time, but not the other way around. If it hits the reject state, then it will hit the accept state, but what if it runs forever? Well, that means it was implicitly rejected, the string, but now we need to accept it, which means we need to run in a finite amount of time. So it doesn't work for recognizers. And it turns out that there is no Turing machine for the complement of some recognizable languages. But for decidable, we can, because we guarantee to hit one of the two states in a finite amount of time, regardless of what the input is. And so by swapping them, we can guarantee the same thing about the complement language. And so the modified Turing machine gets the complement here. Okay, what about for union? Well, here, well, this is asking if D1 is a Turing machine that decides language L1, D2 decides L2. Well, then how do we build a decider for, I get it, I can't spell decider, build a decider for the union of the two languages. Well, how do we do this? Well, that means that we're given a string and we want to figure out whether it's in the language L1 or in the language L2. So we can actually just query the two Turing machines here and just ask, does this machine accept it? And that is fine because each of these two machines decides the language. And so they run in a finite amount of time. So what we can do is just say, okay, well, let's run that string on this machine and run that string on this machine and we accept ourselves if at least one of the two accepts. Because if either one of them accepts, then it must be in the union of the languages. So how do we build a decider? So it's going to be over here. On input w, let's run d1 on w, then run d2 on w, and if either accepts, then we accept, and we can reach this state in a, this step in a finite amount of time because the first two steps run in a finite amount of time. And otherwise we reject. Because if neither one accepts, then it can't possibly be in the union. So we reject here. 
And we could have accomplished the same thing with complement. We can just run the one machine on W and then just invert the answer. That's totally fine too. So this runs in a finite amount of time pretty clearly. What about for intersection? Well, for intersection, well, isn't it kind of the same thing as union? Um, except that we require this condition to be if both of them accept, then accept. But another way to view it is we can actually just use to Morgan's laws. So the intersection of two languages is always equal to the union of the complement languages and then complement the whole thing. Well, since we showed that um, decidable languages are closed under union and complement, and these are a finite number of both of them, therefore they're closed under intersection too. So this one is yes, yes, yes. What about for concatenation? So this is, we're given a string w which is the characters 0, 1 through, through wn, let's say, and we want to figure out if there is some kind of split where the first half is from the first language and the second half is from the second language. We'll note that if the split is here, then there are only finitely many possible splits into two pieces. So the split could be at the beginning or after the first character or after the second, etc., or all the way after the last one. So how do we build a decider for this on input w? What we need to do is split w into two pieces in all possible ways. And we can do that because the length of the input is always finite. So there are only a finite number of splits that we need to actually check. So then run the first machine, D1, on the first piece and D2 on the second. But here, we instead of having either one accept, we need to have both of them accept because we need the first machine to accept the first part and the second machine to accept the second part. So if these two machines both accept, then we accept ourselves. You should always accept yourself. Um, uh, otherwise, reject. So then now what about star? Oh, and I should mark that this is check. What about for star? Well, that's just saying that if we, again, have our input w1 up to wn, well, this is asking if we can split it s some number of times, maybe four or maybe possibly more, where each piece comes from, uh, from that one language. So remember, the star is only applied to one language, not two. So let's just say that the language here we're looking at is L1, just as an example. So how do we actually do this? Well, note that there are only finitely many possible splits here. Well, you, then you maybe say, okay, well, what if one of the splits is empty and the other one's empty at some other point? Well, here, what we can do is let's just ignore the case of where we have two of the pieces being empty. One of the pieces can be empty, but not the other one, and not another one. And we could, if we didn't check that, have the case of where we have so many pieces, we have infinitely many uh, choices of the empty string, which is not something that we would be able to check in a finite amount of time. So what we need to do for a decider then is very similar. On input w, split w into any number of pieces in all possible ways and have uh, at most one of the pieces being the empty string. And there are only finitely many of them. So then let's run the first, the machine corresponding to this language L1 on each of the pieces. So just run all of them. And if all of them accept, then we should accept. So if all are accepted, then accept. 
And then after all of them, um, actually this should have been step four because um, we need to be able to do this after we look at all possible um, combinations, not after this one check right here. We, this otherwise uh, corresponds to after checking every single um, split. Same thing down here. So then otherwise uh, reject. And this runs in a finite amount of time because there are only finitely many splits of this form. And the, this machine right here is a decider, assuming, and there are only finitely many of them, so therefore this runs in a finite amount of time too. So therefore, decidable languages are closed under star too. And so I hope that was interesting. Let, uh, leave a comment below if you found it a different way. As always, please subscribe and like the video. It costs nothing and really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to contribute more, we have a Discord server, link in the description. We have a Patreon page. If you want to contribute more, you get a lot of perks additionally with that. And as always, I will see you next time.